Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling. This is part 5 of the Ring Notes Thoughtless Camel F1 Scale 1 to 32. In this part, I shall be uh, placing on the uh, wings and the rudder of the plane. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. To begin with, I'm using Tamiya's XF16 flat aluminium. This is uh, painting the front engine plate. I decided I didn't like the colours of the struts, I wanted it to be more of a one colour wooden piece. So it's a 382 wood brown by Revel Aqua Colour. So I'm just getting rid of a bit of that grainy texture. Because of the inner frame, I thought, well, I don't want it to be the same colour as the frame that I made up. So here I'm just putting in the uh, skid bar uh, at the end, and um, that was painted with. Tamiya's XF16 flat aluminium as well as Revo 832 wood brown as, as well. So it's a combination of the same colours that I've been using. And now the front engine plate is dry, I can place that on. Um, there is little location points for that just to sit into. Um, each part I'm placing on now is going to be a little bit more difficult to place on because I haven't got the fuel fuselage and um, I've just got half my framework and um, particularly the wings as well there is a, a little part that um, just sits in there where I'm putting my finger um, onto the, the main fuselage that's got to be cut off on the actual wing itself because it impedes onto the frame and it just wouldn't sit properly so once I cut that off, then I was able to uh, get the wings to fit. Now this made the wings extremely fragile. Um, when I picked them up, they would just flop down. That's because that bar arch as a stabilizing bar to stop the wings from doing that. They are meant to go up slightly anyway, but just for the fitting issues, the bar had to come off. This kit has very low, um, low tolerance. There's not much room uh, for um, for the fitting, it's very tight. So, because I'm using um, my own thing, as in I'm scratch building the um, fuselage frame, it's not going to be in the same tolerance, of course, as the actual kit intended. So, don't do this unless you're 100% sure you know what you're doing, um, especially on a kit like this. Now, uh, try it on a cheaper kit, maybe, and um, see how you get on. But this one. Um, will take a lot of trimming and working out as, as I'm going along t to make sure everything fits. And I'm just taking tiny, tiny, tiny amounts off uh, to start with. Um, well, not to start with, as, as I go along, just to make sure I'm not going to be removing too much material. And once I was happy with the fit, it was time to cement it. Now, it's all again cemented on the one side, so this... Um, also adds to the fragility of the wings. Um, I'm not gluing it on the other side just yet because that's going to require um, a bit of super glue for, to get that to bond. Obviously you can see how, how much the wings are flapping about there. That's because the, um, the, the rigid plastic that's there to help stable the wings has been removed. So I, as I said, the, the other side is, will be glued with a, a super glue. Um, once um, I'm 100% happy with it. Now you may have noticed there as well that um, I've knocked off one of the struts. This happens um, all the time when uh, people are building these. In fact I'm surprised that Wing has not so moulded this piece, the fuselage, with the strut. You generally have to add them. Uh, because of this they will break off. So actually, in the end, I, I lost two struts, so that's the two bad ones. But it's a very easy fix, so if this happens to you, it's not a problem. They are just cemented back in place, with no drama whatsoever. And before I can fit the tail wings, um, that has to be modified as well, because of the framework. Uh, you can see on the plastic there where it's meant to fit, uh, but um, because, again, of the um, exit frame I'm putting in, and having them and modify it. So all I'm doing here is taking off the location points and the, the plate that sits hard against the fuselage. 
Next, I'm going on to the copy, and for the inside, it's XF78 wood deck tan, and um, for the inside uh, painting. Now, you don't necessarily have to paint this inside uh, because once it's all on, you really won't see much of it. So, if anything, just paint the rim, but the rim will be in a different color anyway. So, this may be an unnecessary process, but like all models will tell you, you know what's there, and that's what counts. And for the rim, it's Rebel Aquacolor 382 Wood Brown. And there's just a little lip that runs right around. It's quite easy to paint. Just making a point, I'm doing both sides of this part so that it goes in. So the next colour on the main piece is Tamiya's XF68 NATO Brown. Um, it's quite... Uh, th this brown's like a leathery brown, um, in actual fact. Um, so... If, if you're not sure what colours to use and, and so forth, it's always wise to check these colours out. How they dry, not how they look in the bottle, how they actually dry on what will be a painting to, uh, to get the proper shade and tone that you're after. So, now I can uh, place on the wings. I've put on the two little um, hinge brackets here, but um, that was a mistake, tell you the truth. Um, I should have put these on at the end because they, they will just pop off. So it's on. I can place on the cockpit cover that just uh, sits right on top of the framework. Um, I had to be, again, careful with the alignment because of my own framework. So I took a little bit of tweaking around just to make sure I got on straight. I lined it up with um, the um, pre uh, main fuselage and then just try to get it to fit in within my frame. And now for the uh, tail and rudder. First of all, there's a, a little bracket that has to be placed uh, within the, the tail that holds the rudder to make sure it's not moving too much, I, I would assume, and also holds the uh, wiring for it as well. And this is a tiny play, uh, piece. It's a little sort of half circle um, shaped uh, piece that goes in the location point is very small as well so um, I had to be careful here and once it was dry it was just a simple case of uh, placing it in between the uh, two rear wings and now for the flaps first of all I'm drilling uh, two little holes for the rigging just using my pin drive here uh, this is not really a necessary stage but I find it helpful to do this for, uh, for when I'm doing the rigging. And once I have done that, um, it will be a case of just placing the flaps on. Now these are holes I'm drag uh, drilling. They, they, are, they are location marks on the actual uh, flaps as well for you to line them up. So um, I didn't have to worry about trying to align them. So I think this is where I'll end part five, uh, just as I attach these uh, flaps once I've drilled the, the holes. Plus it's quite thick here so um, I took a little bit of drilling to get them done. So if you haven't done so already why don't you check out the channel for my other builds. If you just subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and you'll be kept up to date of all my builds including this one of course. Hit that like button, leave a comment and don't forget to share the video. But for now thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.